So our cat Graham has been to 10 countries and 46 US states. But before, he was just an indoor cat. Now he's the cutest, best little adventure bunny we could ever hope for. Graham was an indoor cat for three years or so before moving into the van, but he always loved staring out the window. We went on road trips to the other side of the city, but nothing too far, and he gradually got better at being in the car. So before we completely moved into the van, we went on a two week trial run with Graham to see if he would like it. And after the initial shock of being inside the moving van, he really started to enjoy it, especially when he got to go outside and explore. Little by little, we let him outside with a harness at first, but he didn't really like it and he would always try and back out of it. So we just ditched the harness and started following him around and he didn't go too far. So eventually we just started letting him out on his own. He would never leave for more than 20 minutes at a time, so we were never too worried about him. But we definitely don't let him out everywhere. If there are dogs, wild animals, or vehicles around, we go with him. We know that he's safe. We really didn't know how Graham would react to van life, and every day that he's in this van with us, we're so impressed with how well he's doing. Starting from a little barn kitten, and now all the way down to Columbia, it's pretty insane. <laughs> Okay, so the first thing to know whenever you want to have a van life cat is they need a place to go to the bathroom, the litter box. Graham sometimes will go outside, but not all the time. He really prefers to go in his litter box. So our litter box is situated right next to our sliding door. It has a lid that we can flip up so that we can easily take out the litter. It's in a box, so Graham can go in and out as he pleases and no one can really no one's gonna see him do anything or it holds the smell a little bit better too because there's an air freshener inside and in the self-contained box we can we also hold the scooper and it's mounted on the side so it's really like a perfect situation for us to get that stuff out of there quickly <laughs> so with any animal living inside the van fans are super important if it's not crazy hot you could probably get away with just an exhaust but since going to Central America, an intake is absolutely crucial. So we have one fan that does intake and the other one that does exhaust. So it's a whole circle that goes around basically the whole van. And then we also have two USB fans that are rechargeable that we can put right next to him before we leave. And we also have a DC box fan that we leave around the van. We also have some metal inserts for the front windows. Uh, we can put them in so that bugs can stay out. The, and the exhaust can pull in the outside air from the front windows. The metal inserts also help to show people that the cat is not in danger in any way because there's airflow inside of the van. Not that we've ever really had any issues with that, but some good Samaritans might not, might not realize that we have two fans in the back and Graham just likes sitting in the front. Another thing that we have are two ice packs that we leave in the fridge. We never leave Graham in the van if we cannot find shade and it's too hot. If we can't find shade, one of us will just sit in the van and be with him and like have the doors open so that there's airflow. Sometimes we also bring him with us if we can't find shade. The fans are really important because cats, unlike dogs, don't really want to go everywhere with you. They don't really want to be walking down the city street. It's kind of scary. So it's really important to have a safe space for him inside of his home so that he can relax in here when he doesn't really want to go outside. So Graham loves his hiding spots. His favorite ones are in the loft above the driver and passenger seats, um, underneath the driver's seat and the passenger seat. And he also has this little apartment that we made for him. He likes to hide under the blankets a lot. He really loves to have hiding spots and cats need hiding spots. They love to be alone sometimes. We keep those spots clear for Graham so that he can jump in and out whenever he wants. So Graham's apartment. We made Graham's apartment in Baja, California, right after we got some Brita. We were on a beach and um, we were thinking, we were trying to plot out how we were going to make this hole in the side of our wardrobe so that he can go in and out and have his food comfortably without the dog trying to eat it. One of the people that were also staying on the beach was actually redoing his van at the same time. So he had a bunch of tools in his van. He cut the hole for us with his saw. And right after that, Graham was able to jump in and out of his little apartment. So inside of his apartment, we have his food. We have a scratch pad for him that is also removable so that we can bring it in and out of 
hotel rooms, Airbnbs, uh, if somebody wants us to stay inside or something like that, we can bring it in so that he doesn't destroy their stuff. <laughs> and he also has a couple of toys in there. Graham actually came up with the idea of the apartment because every time we would open up the wardrobe, he would climb in and start clawing out our clothes so that he could find another hiding spot in between our clothes. He's already loving the wardrobe, let's just cut him a hole so he can constantly have his own spot. So we cleared off a whole shelf in the wardrobe. Our wardrobe is pretty small, so we have to get rid of quite a few clothes to, for him to be able to actually do this. It's so worth it. He loves his little apartment and Sombrita hasn't been able to eat his food. Graham has two carriers. One is for hiking and the other is for long-term airport or like vet visits. So the hiking is actually a backpack and he's gotten really used to the backpack over the years. He now can just tell us when he's ready to be picked up and he'll just sit in the backpack with his little head poking out and whenever he wants to jump out he'll just like start to prop his feet up and yeah we let him out and he just follows us. So the hiking backpack has really helped us get farther out there with Graham. The airport carrier is more comfortable for him. He can stand up and turn around. It's a little bit bigger, but it's not very comfortable for us to carry. So it's not really realistic to bring on a big hike, but <laughs> it's good for him to have a pretty big carrier for longer journeys. Oh my gosh. So his, Graham's food, he has an allergy with to wheat. And we figured this out with a lot of trial and error of different brands. So anytime he had any food that had um, wheat in it, he would scratch his forehead and create little scratches on his head. Eventually we figured out he cannot have wheat. And that's kind of hard traveling down here where it's not higher quality food all the time. We have gone to the more expensive pet food stores and we have been able to find him really good food without wheat. Right now he has Taste of the Wild and he's been eating that for probably eight months. And it's good because he's small, so he doesn't really eat that much food. <laughs> we always pick up at least two bags because we don't know when the next time we're gonna see an expensive food store. So he always has an extra bag of food. We also store his food in an airtight plastic bin. Compared to the heat, Having Graham in the cold is not a big deal. I think he actually likes the cold. I love the cold, so I probably am projecting that. He is a little heater for me when we sleep. He likes to sleep with me underneath the covers. And when we're not here during the day and it's cold, you could usually just find him under the covers. I mean, he sleeps all day either way. So <laughs> for him to sleep under the covers is not too much of a change of his schedule. We do have a hot water bottle for the crazy cold times where if we, we're not gonna, we don't leave them for that long either way, but for the crazy cold times, we do fill up the hot water bottle and put it underneath the covers and sometimes we'll take a nap next to it. Sometimes we'll find them somewhere else that we're like, this isn't warm, but <laughs> either way, he seems comfortable. In the cold, actually it's easier to hike with Graham as well because of the snow. And if there's a one lane track, he can't really go anywhere else and there's no grass to eat. So he's just kind of walking in a line until he can't walk anymore. <laughs> so when it is hot, it is nice to leave open the doors. If it is a campsite that is free of mean dogs, wild animals and vehicles, we'll just leave the doors wide open and Graham will come and go as he pleases. He really won't go too far and he'll only be out there for about 20 minutes and he'll come back and sip some water, munch on some food and probably just lay down <laughs> or see what we're doing. Sometimes he wants to wander around with us and he'll let us know. In the US this was super easy because there are tons of campsites that are free and there's no one around and there's hardly any animals or Sometimes there's animals, but there's no mean dogs for sure, and there's definitely not any vehicles. But as you get farther south, the population density gets higher, and it kind of starts to get a little bit harder to find these spots. So lately, we've been just taking him on hikes, but we still don't use a leash, and he still gets to have his outside time just with a chaperone. So to get Graham to hike, at first we did take him with a leash. He could escape if he got scared, 
and he would back out of it and run away, but usually back to the van. One day we took him out into a fenced area and we thought we'll just let him wander around without the leash and he actually did really well. After that, whenever we were at a safe campsite, we started to let him out and follow him around and watch him. And after he would explore for a little while, he would start to become comfortable with coming whenever we, whenever we would call and run back. One day we, we went on a hike, just Danny and I. We came back to the van and we let Graham out and he just went right over to the trail we had just finished. So <laughs> we got to do that hike twice that day. He didn't go very far because he stopped actually as soon as we hit a little bridge with a little stream underneath of it um, and turned around and went back to the van. But he stayed with us the whole time. And after that, we thought, wow, we're gonna be able to take this cat on some hikes. <laughs> Now he's gotten more used to the water and the wind, so he really doesn't get as scared anymore whenever he hears the water. He'll probably, he usually just looks up at us like, can you carry me over this? Because he doesn't like to get his little paws wet, but <laughs> at least he doesn't run away. So while we're driving, Graham usually just sits underneath of the driver's seat. If we're super lucky, he'll jump on our laps and we'll be able to cuddle while we're driving. And if they're even more lucky, he'll sit on the dash. <laughs> he really just usually sits underneath the driver's seat. But when he really likes to sit on laps as well, whenever it's cold usually. If you open a window, he won't do it either. He never used to cuddle like that whenever we would live in a house. So it was really cool the first time he jumped on our lap and wanted to sit while we're driving and we could just chill with him because he would kind of just like sit near you but not on you before <laughs> so just like Graham spots around the van he also needs some toys so that he doesn't get bored and destroy all of our stuff <laughs> Graham has a scratch pad on his box on the side of his box and he also has a face rubber we've replaced his scratch pad three times because he loves it and he goes nuts on it we also rub some catnip in it sometimes and he goes absolutely insane Graham's favorite toys actually are hair ties. If we leave our hair ties around the van, he will immediately scoop them up and either put them in his apartment or in the water bowl. I don't know why. And he'll play fetch with us with hair ties. If you get to the hair tie before he puts it in the water bowl and you sling it across the van, he will chase it for and bring it back to you a couple times before he gets like bored or tired. <laughs> we also have a couple strings that he loves to chase around, feathers and other kind of cat toys. Something really important for any animal if they go outside is using flea and tick treatment. So we stay up to date on our flea and tick for Sambrita and Grimm because Sambrita meets a lot of dogs and a lot of dogs don't stay up to date with them because sometimes they're not, they don't have homes. So I have reminders on my phone for Graham and Sambrita. Graham gets frontline topical treatment and Sambrita gets Brevecto. So the border crossings with Graham. I really think that if we didn't have an enormous dog in our front seat, they would have no idea that we had a cat. But since we have the dog and they're gonna open the door because they see the dog, they're eventually gonna see the cat and we have to have papers on for both of them. It's really important to have the paperwork. Every country needs a rabies vaccination certificate. So whenever we got some Brita, they gave us a folding card that has every treatment she's ever had and also all of her information. And in Guatemala, when we went to a, a vet a couple times, he also gave us the same card for Graham, which we really appreciate because um, you're gonna have to go to a lot of vets to cross all these borders. And if you have all of these different papers, it's too many things to give them. So just give them one piece of paper, one card, and it has like every rabies vaccination he's ever had, whether or not he's sterilized, how much he weighs, everything, all just on one paper. So the vet can put everything in their computer really fast, and then they can fill it out for the next vet really quickly. That, pl that card is invaluable for us. <laughs> Most countries also need a health certificate to cross through and these health certificates have to be done within the last three months. So Nicaragua to Costa Rica was the roughest for crossing with animals. We needed to have a health certificate 
um, done by a Nicaraguan vet and also they had to, we had to do a bunch of export papers and then import papers for Costa Rica and we actually met a woman who didn't complete her export papers and they wouldn't let her import the dog in Costa Rica so she had to redo some stuff so that border crossing definitely do your research on I mean every border crossing you have to do a lot of research and also Panama to Colombia was kind of hard but besides those four countries almost every other country barely looked at the pets or the paperwork but you should definitely do it on your own discretion if you feel like you should do every paper I we didn't really need export papers but it's all up to you <laughs> thanks for joining us we'll see you guys next time